Hey everyone, N2CUA here. I had a little interesting uh, experience here. I thought I'd share with you fine people. Um, <coughs> was playing with my, well actually, I was playing with making um, RF attenuators, right? Trying to get one reasonably flat. I actually got one that would go up to, all the way up to the uh, top of the two meters with about one dB of uh, difference between you know, like one megahertz and two meters. Not bad. It's hard to do, really. I'm still experimenting. I'm learning. I'm trying to throw that out. Anyway, I can try to get this over here and show you really quick. It's kind of an open, <laughs> an open one, I guess. But here's what it is. And um, so that's the one I'm playing with. It actually does pretty well. Um, but then I ran into another interesting little deal. And I'm like, wow, what the heck's going on here? So I'm going to share that with you just for fun, okay? So right now. Oh, let me show you the XG3 too. I've showed you this before in the other videos. This is the XG3 signal source. Yeah, kind of reflections there. Sorry about that. Um, <coughs> so it's got preset frequency. Well, okay, preset levels, but you can adjust the frequencies with software on the PC um, for each of the different bands. Um, 160 meters through 2 meters, and you can actually go above that if you want to deal with the harmonic system. Um, not a perfect sign, not even really a sign wave, it has a lot of harmonic content. But uh, as far as being on frequency and levels at the frequency you set, very nice, very accurate, uh, reasonably accurate I should say anyway. Um, here's what's interesting. So this um, attenuator I made, <coughs> I put it on the uh, spectrum analyzer, right? Um, with the tracking generator on and normalized and did all that stuff, ran a sweep. And like I said, I mean, it can go up to about 200 megahertz before it hits like a 3 dB point. So if you want to consider that the bandpass, fine. That's not bad. That's better than I've done so far. Um, still playing with, oh, and that brings me to another question. Um, if you guys out there have experience with building RF attenuators for VHF and UHF, any advice you can throw on my comments about types of resistors to use? Uh, I know there's things with lead inductance and stuff like that. I'll keep everything as short as possible. Um, and I have some other ideas I'll share at another time. Um, ways to do that. Um, but any advice is great. The resistor that I have for this is a, a, a Pi configuration, a Pi pad it's called, I believe. And so I have carbon resistors for the shunts. And then the one across the middle of the Pi is a metal film. And that one seems to be the most sensitive to my even going anywhere near it with my finger. So I'm thinking that with metal film, maybe, and it's a small 1 8 watt resistor, that perhaps RF is kind of at some point going across the resistor, not even being attenuated resistibly because it's RF. And I don't really think metal film is going to be the right resistor type to use. So anyway, inputs, 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 please. Anybody, you got ideas? Great, want to hear them. Um... I'm going to try to find a carbon film, but I didn't have one of the right value to uh, throw in there. Um, but anyway, still a lot happier than I was with the last one I built. Here's the interesting anomaly. <laughs> you know, the XG3 is, is a nice signal source. It really is. But it has one small drawback at low levels, and I didn't realize this until later. So here's what I did. I'm going to put the attenuator on it, right? So right now it's set to uh, minus 33 dBm and uh, 144.2 megahertz. And, um, you know, it looks like it's really even tracking it very well here, but that's okay. Um, I just need to be close. Uh, we'll do center to peak. There we go. Um, <coughs> so it's measuring minus 78.7 dBm, and that's fine because the attenuator is roughly 46 dBm. So, or 46 dB of attenuation. So if you add that to um, minus 33, you get like minus, what? minus 77, minus 78, somewhere in there. And then on the screen it's showing a minus 78. So you think, hey, cool, that's working. I'm happy with that. Right. And then I go, okay, so let's take it to the next level. So I drop the level on the XG3 down to minus 73 dBm. And I look at the screen, I go, well, I'll think about it. Okay, so minus 73, you get minus 46, you get like minus 119. Um... But uh, I'm not getting minus 119. What the heck's going on here? And then I dropped it down to another level, even I'm not going to do it now, but minus 107, 
um, there's a next level with uh, 46 dB more be like unreadable by the analyzer. I did that and it's still reading like 119 dB. I'm like, what in the world is going on? I mean, you know, how can the attenuator work, not work at certain levels? I mean, frequency, sure. Levels, nah, something funny going on. So, I'm playing with it, pulling my hair out, you know, trying to think about maybe I should get out the bottle of vodka or rum or something because I just don't understand. And then I realized something very <laughs> interesting. You didn't realize the, la the lowest level on this XG3 without an attenuator is meant to be 100 minus 107 dBm. <coughs> okay, but the analyzer now is sitting there trying to read at something like it goes down as low as minus 138 um, dBm. It's only rated at minus 135, which is pretty nice. But um, mine will put my particular one will go down to minus 138. <coughs> That's pretty sensitive if you think about it. That's like you know, 0.04 microvolts or some darn thing like that. That's really small. And then here's what dawned on me. You'll love this. You're really going to love this. Um, it's a plastic case. <laughs> so, um, in fact, you get, I don't know if you can tell, but that's actually moving around just by me handling the case. So, what I did is I actually moved it halfway across the darn room. It still wasn't reading right. So, I moved it more across the room, but then I wrapped it in aluminum foil, and wrapped it in aluminum foil, made sure that the aluminum foil was kind of, you know, grounded against the shield. And then, now all of a sudden, it's down to minus 106. And I believe, let me move this attenuator down on the floor also. Not sure how much of an effect that's having. Ooh, it's having more of an effect down there. Because it's not shielded yet either. So, alrighty. So it could be radiating a little bit there. So I got my hand wrapped around it to just kind of help shield it. So now it's reading like a minus 118 somewhere in there. Where it should be. Isn't that something? I like pulling my freaking hair out and it's because the analyzer, analyzer is so darn sensitive to uh, the signals it's receiving, evidently not even necessarily all through the coax, I'm not sure about that, but um, that it's picking up emissions from the XG3 through the plastic case, you know, five feet from the analyzer, <laughs> and probably from the um, RF attenuator because it's open right now, I've got like I said, I have my hand wrapped around it, but I don't have any aluminum foil in there to put around it. Anyway, I just thought it was interesting that, you know, because the analyzer is so sensitive to uh, these weak signals that you really have to be careful about that kind of thing, you know, um, it, to pick up, you know, it from other sources other than, you know, the cable, through the cable, it's getting it through the air or whatever. So, I just found that, uh, I found that rather fascinating. And I think, too, uh, when you're using it to check like a ham rig or something, and you know you've got it right near the rig and you've got a coax hooked to the antenna jack on the rig well you know <clears throat> and it's near the rig how much of that energy is coming out of that the uh, xg3 through the case and been picked up by the rig not via the coax so if you're going to use it what i would suggest um i mean if you had the equipment like the analyzer here you could always you know put a, a 50 foot cable on it or something and then um measure the level with the analyzer so you kind of know what you're dealing with, figure out how many microvolts and all that, and then um, feed it through that coax to the uh, rig so that it's a really long distance away from the uh, the rig to get an accurate indication whether it's, you know, working well and that the rig is as sensitive as you think it should be, blah, blah, blah. So, so I ran into that before too with them. I was using an attenuator have another attenuator, I think it's minus 30 dBm, that one's really accurate actually, and I had that with the XG3, and I'm still, I'm thinking that it should almost be unreadable, at minus 107 plus 30 is like 137, the rig should be going, I can't hear that, yet it seemed like it was, and I was so confused about that, but now I know why, because, you know, again, the signal's going through the case, and probably getting picked up by the receiver, connections inside the radio, whatever, um, other than through the coax. 
So anyway, just thought I'd share that. I haven't done a video in a while, so there you go. And I uh, hope Al W2AEW watches this and types up and is like, yeah, be careful what resistors you use or whatever. That would be great. Catch y'all later.